Hi there, my name is Dan and I am an electric vehicle rookie. I made this video because, as you can see, I ordered a wall box Pulsar Plus and um, I actually purchased two of them for an electric vehicle that I've ordered. And I've got one on one side of the garage and one on the other side. The reason that um, we're doing this video is because I'm using the power sharing option that comes with the wall box. This allows me to purchase two 40 amp units and connect them to a single 50 amp breaker outside. I have a 100 amp service, which is not very large. So I could only spare 50 amps of power for this use. Purchasing the 40 amp units allows me to get the maximum Power when one unit is charging and then if two units are charging uh, they'll each get 20 amps automatically and they won't get 40 amps with two units at the same time or 80 amps connected to a single 50 amp breaker either popping the fuse or causing a problem with the system so we're here today to describe the power sharing option how to install it, how to utilize, connect it, and set it up. And here we go. So here we are in the garage, and here's the installation that I have set up. A wall box over here, and a wall box over there. And between them, I run the Cat5 cable above the garage doors going to each of the EVSEs. And this one I've designated as the secondary device. And the one over here on this side, on the right side, I've designated as the primary device. There you go. Powering each one of the wall box EVs is a 50 amp breaker that I had installed right here. So that 50 amp is sharing or is shared by, and it's a hard amp service, by the way. I need to disconnect hard amps. So each one of those wall boxes shares this single 50 amp service even though they're rated at 40 amps so if both of them are on they'd be trying to draw 40 amps from each from here so it'd be 80 amps trying to draw from a 50 amp breaker which won't work so that's why we're looking at the power sharing option for the wall box evscs I created this sketch that shows the various components for using the power sharing option on these wall boxes. Basically, there are just a few things to look for. The first is to designate which one's going to be your primary and secondary devices. So this is my primary and this is my secondary. The next thing is to run the Cat5e cable between the two devices and we are only gonna use two of the wires inside of the Cat5e cable. The Cat5e cable is recommended in the instructions provided by Wallbox. The next thing is, once we've opened each Wallbox, we're gonna look at the switch inside for the terminal and non-terminal switch positions. By default, the boxes had switches set to the T position and the dial selectors were set to seven. So we have to change the selection on the primary to eight or nine and the secondary to zero. Last, when we connect the wiring for the devices, one wire is gonna to connect to the first position on each of the wall boxes. And the second wire is gonna connect up to position four on the primary and position three on the secondary. 
So there's the wiring and overall instruction for the wall box power sharing option. So what I'm gonna do now is remove the ring around the wall box and the faceplate. And there's one Torx screw right here. And there's one Torx screw in each of the four corners to take the wall box off because it's a NEMA 4 rated box to be mounted outdoors or indoors to deal with inclement weather. But it has five Torx screws to remove to take the faceplate off. So I took the screws out of the faceplate. I put one back just to hold the faceplate up and we can open it here. Let's take this last one out. And you can see it's held together by this ribbon cable. So inside the box, which you can't see very well, but there's the wire connector down here there's a t switch up here for t or non t and then this right here is the setting if you have a primary or secondary um, unit and again in my case this one's primary the other one's secondary the default is that this switch up here is in T mode, terminal mode. And in my case, because there's only two of them, they're both in terminal mode, that's fine. On the dial switch, I'm gonna change this to be number eight. Currently default is at zero, I believe. So we'll change this dial to read eight. So, as you can see, the faceplate is off. I disconnected the ribbon from here and this is the terminal not terminal switch and this is the dial as I mentioned for um, the selector of primary non-primary turns out this was on seven when it was shipped so I just dialed it over to eight now that's all set The next thing we have to do is connect the wiring. And again, this is just a Cat5 cable and you only need two of the wires. In my case, I'm going to select blue and green. It doesn't matter which two you pick as long as you're consistent about that. So I'm gonna pick the blue and green wires I'm going to basically tape up the rest of them to be around the stock of the cable so only blue and green are left sticking out. I've taken a little bit of the cover off so the blue and the green have some copper showing. And the last piece is on this wall box, this is obviously the power connection which you can see during the other video I disconnected it so we weren't playing with any hot electronics in here. The second one is for the cable to the J1772 plug. And there's a middle one here that you can use for another connection, I guess. So you have to hold the ring on the inside while you take it out from the bottom. So I've taken the plug out of the bottom and that's where I'm gonna be putting the cable in. I'm probably gonna end up, maybe not, drilling a hole through here and putting it through, but the directions from wall box say if you can, 
to run the wire up the power here into the wall box. That seems like a bit of a challenge since mine is connected in the garage. I don't have inclement weather. It's not really a problem for me. So having it go through the middle connector is fine. Um, but I will probably want to seal it off so dirt and dust can't get inside of it. Again, having this open invalidates the fact that it's a NEMA 4 enclosure. I mean, it's, you could spray water on it and wind and snow and it would still maintain its water tightness. Taking this out invalidates that. So if you're doing this outside, I don't recommend this method for you. have to cut this off and restrip it give myself a little bit of room to work with inside here We're going to continue the process of connecting the wire to the terminal block here, the first green terminal block on the bottom on the left. And there are two wires, the blue and the green, you can see I've taped the cat five so all the other wires are down and clean. I've got the blue and the green. The blue I'm going to put in position one, which is the bottom left corner of the terminal block. The blue in the secondary is going to go in the same bottom left corner terminal spot. Again, this is the primary, secondary is over there, and the primary, the blue is going to go in the bottom left, the green is going to go in position three, third from the left, and then on the secondary charger, the green is gonna go in position four. The fourth one from the left on the bottom, on the left terminal block. Again, there's two green ones here, two green terminal blocks. The left terminal block is what we're working with. Blue to position one, green to position three on the primary, blue to position one, green to position four on the secondary. So. All you need to do is get a small screwdriver, very small for eyeglasses, and it pushes in, but you need to put your screwdriver in the top part of it to kind of release the lever. So there goes position one. Now I'm gonna put this in position three. Push it in, push that in. Everything's tight, everything's tight. Okay, so the wiring for this is actually done. We'll pull this out just a little bit. And there you go. So now we're gonna reconnect the faceplate. Putting the ribbon back in. Make sure it's all snug. Then I'll put the screws back on, the torque screws, one, two, three, four. And then put the face plate on with the screw in the bottom. And this will be all set. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Everything's identical, except the fact that I'll put the green in the fourth position and the dial, instead of being in position eight, will be at position zero. 
otherwise they're the same you're all in T mode um, so there you go So here I am at the secondary wall box. Primary one's over here, secondary's over here. I'm gonna take the torque screws out of the face and out of the bottom of the ring. I'll strip the wiring, connect it all up, pull the power on it before I do any of those things, and reconnect the wiring, the blue in the bottom left terminal, position one, the green in position four, since this is the secondary box. Make sure the dial is set to zero and the terminal non-terminal switch is set to T. Then I'll put it all back together and we will see if the error code goes away on the primary wall box. Interestingly enough, after about 30 seconds, the secondary wall box turned green. The primary one, however, is still red. So what I'm wondering is, do I have to go into the app to set this up before this is no longer red? So I'm gonna give that a shot right now. As you can see, the wall box is no longer red. Why? As I guessed, after I connect up the secondary wall box, it went red immediately after replugging it in. 30 seconds later, it went from red to green. It was good. This one was red. What I assumed was the boxes don't know they're in power sharing mode yet. So I opened up the app, set the power sharing to on, set the, set the characteristics, 40 amps, two chargers, saved it, and after a few seconds, it turned green. So now both boxes are green, sharing a 50 amp breaker, 40 amps. Now my breaker won't get blown, and two cars can charge at the same time, they would share 20 watts, or excuse me, 20, 20 amps each on each car. So, mission complete here.